Hey, this is Adam Evans with Solar Truth, and it's about time I did another video and explain what the F is going on with utility companies and net energy metering in California. It's kind of a mess right now. They finally passed uh, NEM3, which is going to affect everybody in the future getting solar, and they've been trying to do this for like eight years. So <clears throat> there's really no good information out there, just dumb sales organizations making YouTube and marketing videos. You know, not really any anal much analysis with the numbers, what's really going to happen, how, it, how it's going to affect everybody. So if you think you know anything about solar, utility rates, utility companies, batteries, interval data, buyback rates, etc., you're an idiot. Uh, unless you're watching this months or years from now and people have copied my analysis and forged it and you know, this information is going to get out there. Right now, I have godlike knowledge uh, compared to you. But it's okay. I was also an idiot and spent a lot of time analyzing this. Uh, it's some complicated stuff. And to be fair, utilities have made it that way. Even you know the current uh, billing rates uh, that that are out there are pretty complicated, and people just end up paying them and you know bowing down to the utility companies, or they get solar, and it, and it has worked pretty good in the past uh, and currently um, before April fourteenth, two thousand twenty-three. Now it's getting a lot worse. And if you, but if you watch this whole video, you'll also have godlike knowledge and know everything about NEM3 and why the utility companies spent $40 million to make this happen and take more of your money. And you will no longer be an idiot. So there is hope out there. Uh, please like and subscribe to get more wealth of knowledge like this uh, so you can see more YouTube videos I make and be sure to share with your friends. All right, let's get into it. First, you need to understand how NEM2 works and uh, you know, what's kind of happened so far, why they're doing this, um, you know, and how it's going to affect everybody. But basically, NEM2 uh, has, ha has been created because uh, we have what's now called the duck curve. I actually did solar 2008-9, uh, and back then, uh, this was kind of like a normal bell curve. The utility companies have to make um, the utility plants for the peak of this curve, which is is how much energy they have to provide everybody. You know, it ramps up. It used to be like 1 p.m. was kind of the highest uh, point, and that's how big their utility plants had to be. I got like a $10,000 check from, you know, the utility company actually for doing solar that long ago with NEM1 and the uh, CSI rebates. But that, that actually saved them money back then. Now, uh, more and more solar has been installed year by year. So now it's called the duck curve because it looks like a duck, um, you know, and this, uh, uh, they don't like this. They don't like all this energy going back to the grid. It's actually a safety hazard. I mean, I mean the grid can start kind of exploding <laughs> in uh, uh, like 1 p.m. in March because there's so much energy going back and people aren't using, you know, that energy. Uh, air conditioning, you know, businesses are, air conditioning is going, businesses are running. Um, it's hot and solar's working great. So there's a lot of uh, export is what we call it. So, uh, the history, yeah, Hawaii, this kind of happened. I have another video on that. And people are like, oh, solar's allowed in Hawaii. I'm like, yeah, they, they banned it for a couple years. Uh, they put it on hold. And then, you know, they did allow it two years later. This is like seven years ago and 2015. And then, but then they canceled the energy metering. So you have to do a battery with solar there now. And you don't get any credit at all when your meter spins backwards. So it's just what you store in your battery. That's, that's how it is. So California is now doing something similar to that. Uh, so the history of net energy metering, uh, you know, uh, you didn't get any credit either before 1996. Then NEM1 happened, so 2000, or, uh, to 2017, and you got full credit. Solar worked great. You could even do a smaller solar system and, uh, you know, offset your whole bill. Uh, NEM2 is what we're, we're on, uh, at, you know, until uh, April 14th of 2023, and that is still really good, too. You know, you can just do a bigger solar system. Yeah, they did some rates that aren't as, as uh, good. I mean, basically, uh, 4 to 9 p.m., it's more expensive now because of this higher curve. This is how big they need to build their power plants, uh, the peak at, you know, 7, 8 o'clock in the evening, you know, a lot of days. So they charge more now. That's what happened with NEM2. So um, you could do a bigger solar system, though. You still get full credit for solar. So NEM3 finally passed after kind of eight years trying. They had, they had a really bad failed attempt, um, you know, a year ago. 
uh, where they were going to have a solar tax and change, you know, NEM2 and one, you wouldn't even be grandfathered in as long. They got rid of at least a couple of those things. So there's, there's a little bit of good news. But uh, what they did with the data here, or the export rates, is NEM3 is going to give you, uh, it's super complicated. It's actually called net billing, where they're, it's not per kilo, it's not like the, just the energy that you're getting credit for. They're charging you a certain amount during every different time of the day and the month. Uh, so it's uh, what we call net billing. And... 90% uh, of the exported energy from your solar system is, is at this, these really low values. So like, you know, some of the times you don't even get basically any credit, like during the weekends, um, in the evening, in the spring. Uh, and then you get a lot of credit in the, uh, in the evening uh, uh, during the fall, but you're not going to be exporting any power. So that really doesn't help or matter. <laughs> so don't worry about that. Um, so locking in AM2... Uh, is kind of important unless you're watching this video a few months uh, from the time it was produced or came out. But uh, locking in NEM2, uh, you are grandfathered in for 20 years still, and uh, you'll get full credit for solar. Uh, but you do need to submit your interconnection paperwork uh, before then, already ha or already have solar. Um, a battery is nice, but you don't really need it with NEM2. Um, and then you have actually three years to install it after the interconnection paperwork is submitted. Uh, but the utility companies, like I mentioned, spent $40 million to make this happen, to get more money from you. So that's kind of what's going on here. NEM2 is also attached to, to the meter at the house, not the homeowner. This means it'll transfer to a new owner uh, with NEM2. And home values, I think, are going to go up even a lot more that have solar and, and are on NEM2. Um, before, you know, because people are going to want NEM2 houses with solar rather than no solar or have to get NEM3 uh, if they put solar on it, uh, maybe increase like 10% instead of 5% home value. Um, but what you need is a signed contract, single line diagram, lic uh, contract license, uh, or a, a disclosure uh, paperwork, consumer protection guide, and over oversizing attestation. That, you know, solar company can take care of that for you. Uh, but one of, the other, one of the main reasons for this is uh, that duck curve. The reason that duck curve is like that is because this is kind of a typical production. This happens to be like in the summer for uh, somebody you know, that actually does have a battery. But even with a battery, all this overproduction, you know, your battery's charged by like 10, 11 o'clock generally. And all this overproduction that you're not using in your house, usage is orange and production's blue here on this uh, monitoring app from Enphase. And... Uh, all of this would be credited now at those low export rates that you see here. So basically NEM3, they're only giving you about 25% credit for that overproduction. So you need a battery to store that energy. But a battery, you know, helps, but it's still, it's only storing day to day. NEM2, uh, you're storing for the whole year. You know, any credit you save, you can use later, you know, later days, later months. Um, you know, you're, you're storing that credit up for later as well, which is amazing. I mean, it's, it's quite a bit better than a battery, actually. Uh, but a battery is still nice and okay. Uh, th so the, all that exported power, depending on the size of your solar system, it's like, oh, I'll just do an even bigger system and produce more power. Well, uh, the problem is the bigger the system you do, uh, the more energy you export. So as you can see here, the larger the system, the more this export orange uh, uh, bars go up. So even at like 75, 100%, you're still exporting like 50% of that power. Uh, and um, the savings uh, with NEM2 uh, is this blue line here. Um, you know, you could do a bigger solar system, 100%, even 100% is like right there, 120, 110%, 120%. Your savings are still really good. Then they start tapering off once you go larger than that. NEM3, on the other hand, uh, you do about more than 10% solar offset, which means like you're you're producing only 10% of the solar power of your usage, uh, it starts dropping, the savings start dropping significantly and then it just goes down from there. Um, and that's without a battery, but a battery helps a little bit, you know, we'll talk more about that. So anyway, uh, let's say you're a person that, uh, um, well, let's say you were able to get, you know, your solar uh, locked in and NEM2, you know, great, you're grand for them for 20 years, um, you know, we're talking the three big utilities only, SCE, PG&E, and SDG&E. 
Uh, private small utilities don't apply to this. Uh, they have their own thing going on. Um, but let's say it's too late for you. Let's say you thought solar would be free someday, or you thought uh, pay, uh, uh, paint houses would be painted with solar. Hey, I've been hearing this for 10, 13, 10 to 13 years. Um, oh, you're just going to paint on solar? Great. Oh, yeah, this guy's geniuses there. Um, imagine that, is this guy uh, painting a wall or is he painting uh, solar? Hey, who knows? Is he getting electrocuted if he's painting solar? I'm, I'm, I don't know. But uh, uh, this stuff just, just hurts my brain. It, it's really um, just tragic um, stuff. And yeah, sure, there's stuff in college and this cool technology coming out. We can have our hopes and dreams. But, you know, you think about it, you know, like um, solar roadways. Well, let's see. Solar or you get roadways. What do they want from me? Well, they're solar freaking roadways. Okay, so actually this time, what is it? It's technology that replaces all roadways, parking lots, sidewalks, driveways, tarmacs, bike paths, and outdoor recreation surfaces with solar panels. And not just lifeless, boring solar panels. Smart, microprocessing, interlocking, hexagonal solar. Okay. I don't want you to get any dumber watching that video, so stop that. But um, I've been hearing about that for uh, um, 10 years also. It actually came out in 2006. Um, this uh, nice uh, eight-year-old couple now has done three Indiegogo campaigns. Uh, making multiple million dollars on each one and uh, you know that's the kind of uh, stuff that uh, prevents people from actually doing solar that that makes sense and uh, that has worked for people for for years so you know you just have to think a little bit I mean, I mean one semi truck uh, driving over uh, a paved solar road uh, would cause, you know, a at a certain weight would cause uh, millions of dollars of damage and, you know, ha ha not work. And, I mean, it it's just really ridiculous. I mean, there could be like maybe a, a, a court, like a basketball court could be used or something, but, um, you know, very limited application. Um, or, uh, you know, all the dirt and rain and snow, yeah, kind of melt snow maybe, whatever, but um, I mean, is it, you know, the safety aspects of it? Uh, there's just so many issues that obviously have prevented it, uh, you know, in the last 13 years from getting anywhere and just taking people's money that donate to Indiegogo to try to make this pipe dream happen. Um, anyway, maybe you thought that, though. Uh, or maybe um, you, you moved, I mean, you know, or got divorced or got a new mansion or so on. Well, now you have a house without solar after April 14th. So you will be on NEM3, and how will that look? Uh, so let's get into that. Um, uh, so I'm going to show you how you can still save some money instead of uh, being the utility company's cash cow. So NEM3. So NEM2, you know, this is your savings. If you, uh, so what I'm what I'm doing here too. Let's let's see. So Edison, you know, all these export values, all this complicated stuff. I mean, man, it's, they have a nine year plan of all the rates. It's like, uh, it's, it's really crazy what's going on. But uh, first, uh, what you need to really figure out, uh, and this, this like, everybody's not gonna be able to do this. I used to just do this for commercial jobs, or I generally do this for commercial jobs and a project, see how much they're gonna save. I mean, it's thousands of pages of all this interval data, 15 minute interval generally, this happens to be one hour interval, but um, 15 minute interval data. And um, what I uh, do is put this into a program uh, that analyzes it all. Uh, this is energy tool base. And you also uh, need to do a model of the solar system on the house, see how the roof is and everything. But energy tool base takes all this interval data, uh, puts it into the any three rates, all of those 572 export rates and sees exactly what the savings and bill would be if that data from one year ago had those rates applied to this. So basically in one sense you could look at this and you could say it is pretty much 100% accurate but for the past, you know, not for the future because usage could change and you know there's other variables to consider. But for the past it would basically be completely accurate. So you have like the old rates, NEM2, um, without solar, so this particular one and that particular pool of data, uh, it would be like $3,718, about $310 a month average bill. And then 
you add solar onto that with NEM2, and bam, 600 bucks. Okay, not bad. This is like a 100% system. You just have like minimal charges, um, uh, you know, on there. Uh, so that's like, you know, what, th 30 bucks a month or so. Um, and then we switch to NEM3, this TOD, TOUD prime rate. There's only going to be one rate on NEM3. Now you're still paying $2,000 a year. So not great. Things a little bit slow, but a lot of data. Uh, and then you uh, add a battery and that's going to help you a little bit. You know, you save another thousand bucks a, a year. So that's not too bad. Of course, batteries have cost them and stuff. So what's going on here is all this interval data, uh, you know, shows kind of how it works. Like basically your, your solar is the green, your battery uh, is charging here at first, but then all this, you're still exporting to the grid and getting that low rate because your battery is fully charged at that point. You know, so yeah, could you add another battery? Yeah, that would help a little bit, but not much because those batteries would charge pretty quick too and you'd still be exporting a bit. And maybe you wouldn't even need to use all that power from those batteries at night. So they would charge just as fast. I mean, there's a lot of variables going on here. Um, so what that all kind of comes down to is uh, some more charts that I made here. Oh yeah, let's get back to this. So NEM1 without a battery, and then I showed you the um, kind of the cost uh, with no battery and then with a battery uh, and your savings and stuff. So you can still save some money. You're exporting 63% of the energy in this case. Uh, and then with the battery, um, you know, you're only exporting 38% of it. So you're still exporting a bit at that lower rate. Uh, but you are saving more, but that system also costs more money. And what you'll notice is the next chart, this is the main chart that kind of shows how it'll work. So what I did is I modeled uh, a $300 bill. I, I'll probably model some more more in the future, but just kind of like this is where, oh, man, somebody needs solar. If they're over like two to 250 a month, 300 bucks a month or more, the higher your bill is, the more you're paying and the more you're going to save with solar. So offsetting, typically a lot of people like to offset more, high, you know, 114, 110 to 120%. Um, uh, but I modeled a couple different options here. So uh, NEM2, you can see savings is great. You're saving like 99% actually of that bill. Um, and no battery, bills three bucks a month now, you know, great, $120,000 savings. This is what we're used to seeing in California. And we're really, we were really spoiled to be honest. I mean, it was a business paying you what uh, you uh, paying you what you pay them, and an even exchange that you know doesn't really happen in business. So now we're getting into like normal business where uh, they're giving you a lot less credit for it. Actually, a lot less than a normal business that really probably would too. But um, even with the cost of the system, after you get your tax credit, your net savings is still over 100 grand. Payback is like 5.2 years. Um, I mean, just great uh, inter uh, internal rate of uh, return. This would be like investment for stocks and stuff. Just amazing, you know, above like six, 7% is pretty good. Um, so uh, NEM3 would be the next ones with no battery and then with a battery and then with two batteries, just cause like, I want to do one thing in here where it's like, oh, doesn't two batteries solve this problem? Well, not really, you know, you're still exporting 32 instead of 38%. Uh, you are saving the most. So this is the really a overall summary of this with a smaller system size and a battery option. Um, you know, I kind of just bullet pointed a, a few things in here. Um, the best 25 year savings is pretty much a larger system uh, with one battery on NEM3. And uh, that's, you know, not bad. 10 year savings, pretty good. Um, you know, saving a lot of money, still a, a decent amount of net savings. And then kind of the lowest initial cost and quickest payback is just doing a small system without a battery. You know, it's still okay, but you got to, you know, to note here, your remaining bill, uh, average bill monthly, you know, it's still $80 for that uh, big system with a battery. Uh, but with a 50% system without a battery, it's still going to be like $221 instead of 310. So you're really only saving hundred bucks, but that saving is going up more and more as time goes by. Um, but the, co the, the remaining bill is still also going up, but this is just like the lowest cost option. You know, I don't recommend necessarily any one of these options. I just uh, am presenting different options 
uh, depending on what your budget is and how big of a system if you want batteries or not. Um, the, the best savings versus cost from a battery is when you do like a 60 to 80% system. So you can see the 68% right here. This is when you really hit that export rate where you're not exporting as much energy anymore. Like even 88%, even you're still exporting 29% of that. This arrow is annoying how it does that, but anyway. Um, uh, so if you do a smaller system with a battery, yeah, that's kind of like a good middle ground, you know, that might be a, a nice idea, especially if you don't have as much enough roof space to do a bigger system or an efficient efficient system because you know it's the system sizes in here because that's just one variable with production and offset you know other variables are um how good is that roof um is there shading you know how much sun hours are in that area per day so what that all what that all results in is the offset production offset actually and this is kind of just general cost with battery and solar system you know averages put in there so um then uh the the fourth thing on here is two batteries that i kind of went over that's your most overall saving still you know ninety four thousand, but that's also the most expensive initial cost um but you know yeah that's how you get to that lowest uh monthly average bill you know remaining two so um you know honestly i would kind of shoot for like 80 to 100 percent um or even a little more than 100 percent but um uh, you know, with a battery as well, because now you got the additional feature of a backup, a battery backup, uh, too. So uh, that's going to help, you know, people that get power outages a lot of times, you know, they could be losing hundreds of dollars of food and other problems and work and stuff not having a battery. So, you know, that, that is nice. But if it's kind of more of a budget thing, hey, you can at least do some solar without a battery and, you know, you'll, you'll be uh, um, uh, not exporting too much of that power to the grid. And, you know, you're cutting that in half, as you can see, 63% exported at that low, like 25% credit versus uh, 38%. And then when you add a battery to that, only 7%. So that's when you get kind of really good with battery effectiveness um, with the rate. So, you know, solar is still kind of the same. It's still compared to like renting versus owning electricity. Um, you know, you're, you're renting right now. You know, you're kind of just really screwed if you don't do solar uh, uh, no matter what and just pay, paying, you know, whether you rent your home and can't do solar or have a bunch of trees and can't do it. But, um, you know, buying your home, it's still like owning, you know, you're still owning solar now, owning your electricity, but there's going to be some increases, property tax, HOA that you can't really get around even owning a home. Now with owning solar, it's kind of the same way. You're going to have a partial electric bill payment that will increase depending on the size of the solar system and the batteries. So, you know, that's, that's kind of what it comes down to. Um, and I mean, you, you need to, you know, talk to somebody you trust. Like I can help people out with solar, but I also kind of have a lot going on. Um, you know, but, uh, I also have a lot of connections and, uh, resources and stuff. I mean, I have a solar and electrical contractor's license and I'm still, uh, you know, involved in the solar industry in a lot of different ways in California and help people with, with solar and battery backup and stuff. So you can, you know, message me if you want and doing an in-depth analysis like this, like just real, really is probably not going to be done on, you know, um, everybody's particular case. Uh, there's a, um, you know, you need like a good roof model. Aurora is amazing uh, to do roof modeling. And I mean, you can see how the sun affects it with the shade and the trees and all that stuff, um, you know, at each hour of the day. I mean, it's just very in-depth. And then creating a good production solar system, <clears throat> then also, um, you know, energy tool base can model this interval data, which is very useful. But, you know, this tool is like a couple hundred bucks a month and yeah, uh, you know, not not many uh, uh, even companies use this because it's more just like commercial, but it's really what helps analyze all this and at least figures out like what we need to do <clears throat> to uh, make solar work the best and offset it in uh, in California now under NEM3. So you definitely want to talk to somebody you trust uh, that knows what they're doing and a company that is going to be around, has good warranties and is going to last throughout the time of these systems and stuff. So that's really important. And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. I mean, make sure, you know, like I said, to like and subscribe and comment and feedback on here. I'm going to do some more videos soon about, uh, you know, how, how much solar you need for electric vehicles um, and some cool stuff like that. And more analysis definitely on this too, as it comes into play. I mean, at this point, we only have a couple more months to, to really work on getting locked in with NEM2. But then after that, 
uh, it's going to really be seeing this in effect uh, and um, seeing different um, you know, results from people having solar on NEM3 and what the remaining bills are actually going to be. But they really are, I mean, the, these, these models are incredibly accurate with Energy Toolbase. And um, we're actually going to see um, you know, this happen. Right now we're modeling it with all the pretty much a very accurate data you know, then we're actually going to see it, how it looks on people's bills. I mean, right now people are upset if they have like a $20, $30 bill, you know, after solar. And it's going to be almost impossible to get that low of a bill with the new <clears throat> rates, you know. I mean, you're going to have all these additional charges and stuff and still have uh, some, uh, some charges here. <clears throat> and then, you know, two batteries and a really big system. Yeah, you can actually go up to 150% solar with NEM3. That's one of the things also. But, you know, 150% solar and two or three batteries is going to, uh, you know, be, be pretty uh, expensive. And the payback is going to be kind of long, but it will be larger. And, yeah, that will cover it more. Uh, but, yeah, you're still going to never offset as good as you did with NEM2. So the main thing is kind of hopefully people got in NEM2. Thanks for watching. And uh, hope you understand NEM2 better now and how uh, rates really work and how exporting energy, you know, I mean, it also gets into like understanding kilowatts and uh, uh, watts. And I mean, there's a lot more stuff too. I'll probably do some videos on kind of like that, ba you know, basic like electric knowledge and uh, kilowatts and <clears throat> um, versus kilowatt hours and especially batteries, you know, batteries are very complex. Okay, that's all for now. Thank you guys for watching.